Keynet users will notice that in front of me, I have a box. And in this box is a lot of fiber and a lot of really cool stuff that is going to way overhaul my home network that is probably going to be better and more expensive than a lot of business networks I've set up. But in front of me here is a box full of fiber that FS.com was kind enough to send over to me. Funny enough, I was literally about to buy a lot of stuff directly from them. They're like, hey, do you want to do a few videos on our stuff? I was like, well, yes, I will. Here is exactly what I was about to order. So let's go ahead and open it up. It's a lot of fiber. All right, so I have been wanting to upgrade my network to include fiber. Right now, I'm actually going through and running ethernet cables throughout my house. I'm going through and I've got access to my attic and I'm going through and actually putting ethernet cables through all the walls and it's going to be very nice. Now, those can go up to 10 gig and I am going to be having a 10 gig switch, but what I really wanna be able to do is break that 10 gig barrier. And to do that, you need fiber. And so that is where this right here comes in. Not all the fiber I'm gonna be setting up is just gonna be so I can go over 10 gig, but it is all going to allow me to go over 10 gig. Specifically, I'm gonna start off with 25 gig, and then I might see about going 100 gig at one point. So right here, these are OEM4 patch cables. So I've got eight of these guys right here that are all 30 meters. And so there are really two different reasons why you use fiber cables. One of them is because you wanna go really fast, and the other one of them is you wanna go really far. And so fiber optic cables allow you to go really fast, really far. So fiber optic cables are pretty much these tiny little hairs of glass type substance that have a refraction index, basically how much it bends light, optimized so that it's got almost zero loss throughout a cable like this. You can run fiber optic cables for kilometers easily with fairly inexpensive transceivers. And so they allow you to stick a lot of data all down a very small little fiber without really having much loss. And so it allows you to actually go incredibly high speeds. There's currently a 400 gigabit standard using fiber optic cables. And so it basically is just blasting light incredibly quickly. And so I've got eight of these guys right here, which are OEM4 patch cables. Basically a patch cable means that both ends have been terminated because you don't terminate your own fiber. <laughs> if you wanna get into terminating your own fiber, it's probably going to cost you at least $5,000 to get all the equipment just to terminate it. And that is just to get the equipment. It is incredibly difficult to do. And most businesses don't even terminate their own fiber. It is incredibly rare to actually find somebody who's gonna go through and build custom fiber optic cables for an installation because it's just way easier to buy the pre-terminated stuff because you can't really screw it up too easily. The only thing you can screw up is the bend radius. So I got eight of these guys right here, which are all going to be going from my server room into different places. So I'm gonna have four going from the server room into the networking closet. Basically I've turned my laundry room into a networking closet. And so I'll have four of those terminated with the rest of the patch cables. And so those cables are gonna be for multiple purposes. It's honestly partially just for future compatibility as well. So the nice thing about fiber is, if there's a new standard that comes along and you need to be able to go from 25 to now 100 gigabit, you just buy a new transceiver. As long as you've got good enough fiber, which OEM4 is good enough fiber for 100 gigabit, it's all about how far it transmits, you can just go through and buy the new transceivers and stick them in without having to go through and upgrade any cables, which is really nice. And so to start off, these are going to be used for two different things. First off, two of them are going to be SFP+, Plus, plugging directly into my Unify Enterprise switch, the one that's got half two and a half gig, half one gig, the 24 port one. I've got a video that should have come out by now on that. And so I'm gonna be using that for the SFP uplinks for that. And so that will be 10 gig to my main switch. And then after that, once I, well, save up some money for it, I want to be upgrading to the Enterprise 10 gig switch that Unify sells. And so it's got two 25 gig uplinks to it. And so by adding that switch in, I'll be able to have 10 gig uplinks to pretty much anywhere in my house that I need it, which is going to be awesome. It'll allow me to edit videos from pretty much anywhere in the house that I want to. I just gotta grab my 10 gig adapter for my laptop and just get going, which will be really nice. And so that will have two 25 gig uplinks 
to my master switch. My master switch is gonna be the topper rack switch. It's going to be the Unify Enterprise switch that has, what, 20 SFP Plus ports on it and four SFP 28, 25 gigabit ports on there. And so that is the plan right now. I'm going to be using this to go into the 25 gig domain, though that upgrade is going to take a little while because those switches are not cheap and I gotta, I gotta raise my fund money. So for that, I've not only got these, but I've also got a bunch of smaller patch cables. So I've got some two meter ones right here, which are pre-terminated. Those are going to be going from the LC connectors. All these cables I've got are LC to LC. And I've got these little keystones that I'm gonna put in the walls, as well as on my actual keystone panel. And so these are going to go from that to my actual server rack. And as you can see, I've got quite a few of them. So I've got a bunch of the two meter ones and a bunch of the 0.5 meter ones. The 0.5 meter ones right here are gonna be used for the actual patch panels. So I'm gonna go from a patch panel directly, it's not far at all, to the switch that I'm gonna be hooking up. And so you don't want to have too much extra patch cable, but you also don't wanna have too little. So you really kinda of gotta measure out exactly how much you're gonna need. Because if you've got too little, you don't wanna have it bending and have a bad bend radius because fiber stops working if you bend it too much and it can break. And if you've got too much, you don't want too much weight just hanging down on those patch cables, causing them to bend. And so you really need to figure out exactly how far you're gonna be doing if you are gonna be buying this. I would generally recommend buying a little bit more than you need because having a little bit more means you probably don't have as sharp of bend angles versus if you've got a really tight connection, you might have too short of bend angles and over time that can cause the fiber to break. And so I've got a bunch of these I gotta pull out. Yeah, there's a lot of them. So here is a two pack of some transceivers. I'm also gonna be testing out ultra long transmission distances. So I've actually got a few different reasons to have one gig SFP ports. So first off is one, just if you have a really long run that's past the 100 meters allowed by copper RJ45 ethernet, then SFP is a very simple and honestly pretty cheap. Fiber is not expensive as you think it is. And so you can get very, very long runs that would otherwise be impossible. The other really nice thing about fiber is, fiber is completely non-conducting. So that means that if you have a lightning strike and it strikes a fiber optic cable, it's not going to surge through the rest of your network and cause issues. And so if you look online, you will see actually a lot of horror stories of people who have huge ethernet hookups, all these copper cables together, and one of them gets struck by lightning. Maybe they buried it underneath their driveway or something, and it's struck by lightning and it goes unshielded, unstopped through their entire network. It basically uses their switch to go to almost every device in their house hooked up to a wired ethernet and fry everything. And so another common thing that people will do is if you do have an outdoor run, even if it already is copper RJ45, what you can do is get two little SFP connectors, a tiny little piece of fiber in between them and two media converters that will effectively stop any electric flow. So say that copper cable gets hit with a ton of lightning. It'll go through that entire copper cable into the media converter. It'll probably fry the media converter, but it will not go over that fiber because fiber is non-conducting. And so if you do have outdoor runs, it's not a bad idea to actually go through and set this up because it can give you a lot of peace of mind because it can be incredibly expensive. Think about all your expensive gear is hooked up to wired ethernet, most likely. So there have been some horror stories of people frying entire networks. And so that's another common reason why you'll see people's setups where they'll have this little fiber in between two things and like, why do you have that set up? And it's because it's a perfect insulator pretty much. So then I also have some 25 gig DACs. So that's direct attached copper. They basically fit in the exact same slot as SFP plus. It's just SFP 28. And so what that allows you to do, if you have a really short run talking like under 10 feet, you can just buy a DAC like this and it's way cheaper. And basically it's direct attached copper. 
And so I've got these for actually on my network. So what I'm gonna be doing is also having uh, probably my file server have a direct 25 gig uplink to my top of rack switch. And so that way I can actually take advantage and have multiple computers all accessing the file server without any kind of bottleneck based off multiple connections. The other thing is I've also got those fibers coming into my office. So one, I wanna be able to start doing videos where I'm actually pulling in 10 gig connections, SFP plus style, directly into videos like this. I'll have it directly behind the camera, just get a little piece of fiber, plug it in, test it out, unplug it real easy. And then the other thing that'll be nice about having the fiber in my office is eventually I wanna upgrade my Mac to having 25 gig networking. It's complete overkill and I'm really waiting on cheaper adapters to come out and I'm hoping they will, maybe in the next couple of years, but that will give me full 25 gig uplink, which will be awesome. And so then we've also got a ton of 10 gig and 25 gig SFP adapters. So the 10 gig are SFP plus and the 25 gig are SFP 28. And these are fiber optic transceivers. And you wanna make sure whenever you're buying fiber optic transceivers that they actually work with the device you're looking for. It's the stupidest thing ever. Basically manufacturers started basically locking their own ethernet cards to only work with their own transceivers. FS does allow you to basically emulate any single one, but you do have to buy it at the time. So you need to know, okay, I need a Intel SFP transceiver, and you have to actually buy a Intel SFP transceiver. So you just make sure whenever you are going through and purchasing, look up the card you're gonna be sticking it into, and actually make sure it's going to work with the specific transceiver you need, because you need the transceiver to match it. It takes a fair amount of Googling, but it shouldn't be too bad. I've fallen into that before, it's a pain. It's one of those things that I really hope just dies off. I don't think Unify locks them at all, but one thing you just definitely wanna make sure is make sure that you're buying the right one. There's a lot of goodies in here. I also have some Velcro strips that they were nice enough to send over. I basically just sent them over my entire shopping cart because, well, they were like, hey, we'll send you some stuff. I'm like, this is a lot of stuff I was gonna buy anyway. Um, so I wanna go through and I'm going to redo my entire rack. Right now it's been pushed around, moved around so much. I wanna get it cleaned up. And to do that, I'm going to use these guys right here. I'm actually gonna go through, color code all my cables, get right distance ethernet runs. I've spent the past few months with moving especially, just throwing stuff together. We've been painting different rooms, just gotta move around everywhere. So once it's finally in the guest bedroom, which is where it's gonna live, I'm gonna go through and clean everything up and use those DACs as well to get everything really nice, clean ethernet runs. And then right here is actually one of their PoE Plus switches that they're nice enough to send over. It's just an eight port unmanaged switch, but it's actually a pretty decent price point. And so I was like, yeah, I actually would like to check that out and really get to testing these things out because I do think that a lot of PoE switches are kind of overpriced and a lot of people don't need a managed switch. And so a thing you can do is save a lot of money rather than buying expensive, huge PoE switches if you just wanna run a few security cameras is to buy a cheap unmanaged switch like this. And so that's kinda of why I wanna test it out and be able to run all your security cameras off that. And it doesn't really matter if there's faster than gigabit uplink to it if it's just security cameras. And so any of the just regular PoE stuff you need, you can just run off this and then you can have faster switches if you want faster traffic for everything else. But for security cameras, you're not gonna be able to saturate a one gig connection, even with like seven security cameras, unless you're way overdoing it and recording at like 4K 60 FPS at ultra low compression rates, which is just overkill. You don't need to be doing that if you are running security cameras. You tend to want pretty small footages. And honestly, a lot of times, you probably have a 100 megabit switch and not really notice a difference. And that's it, the box is actually empty. I'm actually very excited to go through and redo my network for this because I think it's gonna be a lot of fun. It is gonna be hard actually wiring all that fiber through the house because you've gotta be very careful with it. You don't wanna get the ends dirty or anything like that. Though I do have easy LC to LC keystones that should keep it pretty easy. And so that is definitely going to be a few different videos. We're currently going through and painting the room right now that the server's going in. But once we're done with that, I'm gonna go back up to the attic and go through and wire these 
fiber optic cables and I'm very excited to test that out. All right, well, that's gonna be it for this. Subscribe, there's a lot of great videos coming. I'm very excited. Also, put any other test you'd like to see me make with any of the stuff you've just seen in the comments below and have a good one. Bye.